Good morning, everyone. Today, our session about the prevention of respiratory hazard through engineering controls. The contents of this lecture will be about, about the availability and functioning of airborne infection isolation rooms, availability and functioning of portable HEPA filter machines, availability and functioning of laboratory hosts. In the infection prevention and control practice, we have a specific recommendation or specification for the negative pressure room or airborne infection isolation room. Air is a single room occupancy patient care room used to isolate a patient with a suspected or confirmed airborne infectious disease. Air should be clearly labeled with a minus 2.5 Pascal negative pressure in the room as a minimum, which is continuously monitored by the fixed audiovisual monitor. So the machine for the audiovisual monitoring of the negative pressure room must be audiovisual. For an airflow rate of 12 air change per hour as a minimum and direct exhaust of the air from the room to the outside of the building after being passed through the HEPA filter with 100% fresh air supply all the time. In this type of room, we have to have a bathroom ventilation exhaust should pass through the HEPA filter. An anti-room is not required, but it is preferred or recommended if it is possible. Negative pressure isolation room walls, floors, and ceiling surfaces should be easily cleanable and highly durable to withstand frequent cleaning and disinfection processes with an approved MOH disinfectant. From the picture itself, you can see the type of the monitor that required the audiovisual one, so monitoring of the airborne infection isolation room. Monitoring of environmental conditions, pressure, temperature, air change per hour, and humidity should taking place all the time. The pressure from the monitoring device installed at the entrance to the air should be recorded on a daily basis in the log designated for that purpose by the responsible nursing staff in the department. All HIPAA filters are changed from 6 to 12 months, appropriate PBE required, and based on the manufacturer instruction of the same filter, together with their disposal as a medical waste based on the infection prevention and control policy and procedure. The second substandard that required for this aspect is availability and functioning of portable high efficiency particulate air filter or HEPA filter. A portable HEPA filter can theoretically remove at least 99.97% of dust, pollen, mud, bacteria, and any airborne particles with a size of 0.3 microns at a specified airflow rate. We have a specific indication that required for the usage and applying of the portable HEPA filter. We are using the portable HEPA filter during the aerosol generating procedure. Example, nasopharyngeal swabbing in case of air is not available. The HEPA filter is used to improve the air quality in the infectious respiratory patients, waiting areas, and shift clinics in the autopsy room if the air is not available. We have to consider specific or special consideration of HEPA filter. The portable HEPA filter is not needed and it's not a part of the droplet and contact precaution required. We have to consider that the replacement, the regular replacement of the HEPA filter. So replacement should be taking place according to the manufacturer instruction or recommendations and the replaced filter should be discarded immediately as the infectious medical waste policy and procedure. Also, we have to consider that if we need to increase the effectiveness of this machine, we need to place it as close to the expected source of the contamination. The third substandard of this standard is availability and functioning of laboratory biological safety holes. When we are exploring the laboratory biological safety hold, we have to focus on the following. Hazardous biological material should be safely contained or removed from the laboratory to protect individuals and the environment from any respiratory hazard exposure. Biological safety holds appropriately classified HEPA filter must be used as per the MOH requirements. Laboratory staff must process culture that are suspected or confirmed to contain mycobacterium TB in the biosafety level 3 laboratory as a minimum requirement and the manipulation of infectious material that may generate a 
must be properly contained or performed in the Biological Safety Cabinet Class 2P. Thank you for attending this session. And if you have any clarification or inquiries, please don't hesitate to contact us at any time.